Hello, and welcome to another amazing episode of TMC, where we are here to help you take your relationship from, from surviving, surviving to, to thriving. thriving. If this is your first time joining us, go ahead and subscribe. Click the like button and turn on your notifications so you'll be notified when we upload a video every week. Today on TMC, we're excited to have Tony and Elisa De Lorenzo with us today on lunch day, November 9th for their new book, The Six Pillars of Intimacy. Well, first of all, we are so excited to be here yes. with you and with the whole audience. Um, Tony and I have just celebrated 25 years of marriage. So we've, yep. been, awesome. we've been doing this thing for a little while. Yeah. Um, we have one in college and one in high school. And so we have weathered all of the adventures that come along with doing that. And we, we have been studying marriage and really pouring into marriage for the last 11 and a half years now. Yeah. Um, so. Awesome. Awesome. And tell us a little bit about what started you on your journey to studying marriage. What started you on your journey to that? Yeah, well, a lot of it was where we were in our own marriage. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the first place for us. It's just, where were we in 11 years into our marriage, we were at the brink of getting divorced for the second time. And so we were looking at that and, and, and we had a five and a two year old. And we were just, we were struggling. We were in the, the throes of this this time where we weren't connecting, the kids were really a lot. We had a business running and we were just surviving, mm -hmm. you know, like, like you guys said, I mean, I'd rather be thriving than surviving. And we were really just surviving. And so we happened to be watching news station, some friends of ours, their daughters were playing some beach volleyball or beach tennis tournament mm -hmm. here. And after that segment though, there two couples came on and both of these couples had done sex challenges. Mm. And it just sort of like piqued my curiosity because we are about <laughs> to lead a small group study at our church mm -hmm. uh, on the Song of Solomon. It was going to be an eight week study. And in my head, I'm like, well, things aren't really great, but I'm, I'm hearing these couples talk. And so I remember just looking at Elisa as the segment ended and I looked at her and I said, hey, what if we do a 60 day sex challenge? The answer is no. Yeah. <laughs> what? It's not like that. It's not that like, like he barely got he barely got that question out, and we were at such such a bad place in our mm -hmm. marriage that I couldn't envision the idea of being that intimate for one day, let alone sixty days. Mm -hmm. And so I I said no. I went in the bathroom and put on you know this fabulous like face mask, you know, like the bright green that says nothing's happening tonight either. Like, yeah, because she came out and I was like, well, maybe tonight she comes out. She's like in this big old green mask and everything. I'm like, pull out my book. I'm like, I'm going to hide behind the book. Oh. I'm going to read. I've got the mask on. Doors are closed. But, you know, really the next day um, with a basket full of laundry in our garage, standing there, getting ready to go full of clothes. It was kind of this come to Jesus moment mm -hmm. where, you know, the thought really, you know, I, I, I heard God say, if you're not willing to try for your marriage, it's over. Mm. And having a two and a five-year-old at that point in time, that is not, that is not what I wanted to hear. Mm -hmm. And it was just very much the, the thoughts that started tripling. Like, he's not asking you to do anything crazy. He just wants to be close to you for two months. Like, what does that look like? And so we, uh, we embarked on it and completed 40 out of 60 days. And wow. that was for everything that we've done since it was it was that dramatic shift in our marriage that's wow, amazing. wow. That, that is that's very amazing and i love i love that we started with this because just hearing that that's like right out of the gate encouraging to couples that no mm. matter where you are that if you look at your marriage and say i don't want this to be over no matter how bad it feels mm. or how bad it seems I, I want this to work out. I want my family to continue. Then just putting in a little bit of effort can turn that thing around. Sometimes you got to get radical. I mm -hmm. think we we're looking at it. I mean, we, we were definitely looking at three different options. One was, you know what, we'll, we'll stick it out till the kids turn 18. Uh, we'll get a divorce now or, or see, we're going to get radical in some way, shape or form. And for us, the 60 day sex challenge was that, mm -hmm. that shift that needed to happen 
for other couples, it may not mean doing a sex challenge, but what are you going to do to step out and go, we're not going to just survive this thing anymore. We're, we're going to go after it. Yeah. And what does it look like for us? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That is a, you talking a fight for your marriage. I mean, that's how, how did that, how did that move from day one to day 10 then from day 10 to day 20. I mean, yeah, what was the progression? What, what was the progression yeah. of the relationship and how did it shift? Did it shift right away or talk about well, it? I, I will tell you the first month I was like, this is better than our honeymoon. Like I was thinking about sex again. We were, we were getting creative. We were doing all this stuff that hadn't happened for like 10 or 11 years. We were initiating differently. <laughs> we were, we were foreplay was definitely at the forefront. Um, we were we were working together as a team, mm -hmm. which I think we've lost, which we lost in our marriage. Uh, I think a lot of things, no matter from chores to kids to work to, to in-laws and outlaws and everybody else, and me, everything was me against her or her against me. And instead we said, you know what, enough of all that. We're on the same team. How are we going to engage right. these, whatever's going on in our lives and just go, all right, there's a problem. Together, we're going to find a solution because at the end of the day or in the morning, what, we're going to have sex. Man. And the goal is that we're going to have sex so we can sit here and argue about this and waste two hours <laughs> or we can come up with a solution quickly together and go have sex. Yeah. 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 I, I like this. I like this. And I wanted to know because, Alisa, you started off like, no, right. ain't happening. And no. then it's like within a month, you're like, oh, okay, this is good. <laughs> I mean, I'm thinking about this. I'm enjoying it. I even want to plan for it and be a part of it. And I think that that's great because for some people that may have found that fizzle, the couples that have found themselves in that fizzle, like you said, Tony, for whether it's the kids, the schedule, the job, the business, the ministry, whatever it is, you find yourself in that fizzle stage where you like, I got the green mask on, just let me go to sleep. Let me read my book, check my emails. And then going from that in a short, in a, a month is a short period of time yeah. to go from that to now I'm thinking about being intimate with you. I'm thinking about us having this time together. That's great. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I do believe what has helped us too through that. We were leading that small group study. And so we had accountability every week. Mm -hmm. and I, for us, it was really fun because here you had, I don't know, I think we had eight couples in that group. And it was just fun to just talk to them about it and get open, honest, and transparent about our mm -hmm. sexual intimacy, mm -hmm. which I feel like has been such so suppressed, mm -hmm. even at that time, that it just allowed everybody to just have, just laugh a little bit more and, and just allowed us, I think, to not just be in our own heads, mm -hmm. like this is just us against the world and we're going to make, no, no, we were there, but we also had to share some of the experiences, right. the ups, the highs <laughs> and the lows, and they were there to encourage us. So I loved that part of it. Well, it was really, you know, it's interesting because when a lot of people hear this story, they focus on the fact that we had sex for the 40 out of the 60 days and, and sex was really the catalyst mm -hmm. for the transformation that happened in our marriage because you know Shante, so much of what happened in that first month was that we actually started to rediscover mm. one another you know we, we realized that that we could have conversations again that didn't involve you know paying the bills or talking about the kids or talking about, like we were we were joking with each other and we were laughing together we were we actually looked forward to spending time together again. And it had been a long time since I was like, oh, well, you know, yeah, I, I, okay, yeah, fine, we'll go out. But it was like checking the box. Now I was like, oh my gosh, like, when are you coming home from work? Yeah. Right. And, and the physical touch. And so there were all of these things that were shifting because we made one decision to be consistent about making our marriage a priority. Mm -hmm. and, and so, yes, the sex was the catalyst, but literally our entire marriage, every facet was changed because we said, you know what, for two months, we're going to make each other a priority. And your emotional intimacy obviously gets engaged. Like you, you're going to have to be able to, to share what's going on and how are we going to get through maybe a problem? Mm -hmm. um, how are we going to get through certain hurdles that we need to, to address? I mean, I, re I still remember one time us talking on the phone I was up at a, at a, a party for a good buddy of, of, of mine and ours who was getting deployed. Yeah. And I remember being up at that party, driving home, calling Elisa, talking to her, going, 
I'm going to get home at 11.55. We're, it's going to have to be a quickie tonight, baby doll. We're going to get it in. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I come like roaring into the, into the driveway, you know, <laughs> jumping in into the house. Luckily, kids are already asleep. And I mean, you know, getting it in, starting before the, the midnight, clock gets midnight yeah. and boom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and and that's just what you guys are talking about is intentionality. It's yes. intentionality. You said being intentional about making each other a priority, being intentional about we're not going to let midnight strike before we get it. You know, all of it, just yeah. everything. When are you coming home? Intentionality and the intentionality on you two as a couple, as a unit shifted everything. And you said the sex was the catalyst to start it, but then the intimacy and all of that came with it and it shifted everything for you all. I think that's awesome. Well, it, it, part of that too came out of the fact that, you know, I think anybody can do something for seven days. Yeah. Right. A lot of people got in, got intimidated at the idea of 60 days. They're like, that's a really long time. Now, lo and behold, you know, some 11 and a half years later of podcasting, we've got a number of couples in the one family who have done 100, 200, 200 plus day challenges. So we're, we're getting smoked by the people in our drive, which is incredible to us. But (laughs) But what we wanted to do, because what we found, even as we were starting our 60 day sex challenge is that, you know, when you think it's just about the sex, then mm-hmm. you, there can be a lot of things that derail you, right. right? What happens when, when the schedules get really busy, what happens when there's a last minute, you know, boss says you need to stay late. What happens when a kid gets sick? What are you going to do? What, 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 what do you do when you're only in the missionary position? And that's the only position you've done for five years. How do we change that? Up? How do we, how do we, engage you guys so you can go you know we could we could try a new position Mm -hmm. so we wanted we wanted to give people a guidebook that would set them up for success Mm -hmm. you know as we come alongside couples we are constantly talking about you know what are the tools in your toolbox Mm -hmm. and this book really has become a tool in so many marriages around the world in their toolbox to say you know what we're not just going to say we're having sex for seven days we're actually going to we're going to have a, a game plan. We're going to have the blueprint. Yeah. And that's where this book literally from before, mm. <laughs> before you even put it on the calendar all the way through your setup for success. Wow. Wow. That's awesome. So the seven days of sex challenge, that's one of your books. And that's like the blueprint to get everybody started kind of to be successful, give you some ideas and outlines. And then you guys also just released another book, the six pillars of intimacy. So right. So you have the the seven days of sex challenge to give the idea and the blueprint to get them started. But then to me, I would say the six pillars of intimacy is when we go deeper. Very much so. Um, You know, what we had discovered all those years ago was that there are these six pillars, emotional intimacy, right? All the words the two of you are speaking, your physical intimacy. How do the two of you touch one another? And we're talking about the non-sexual touch. Yeah right? What, what's the financial intimacy in your marriage, right? W- w- money is a factor in every marriage. So how is that all happening and going around? You know, what does it look like to have spiritual intimacy, mm-hmm. right? What are, you know, everything from praying together, go to church together, your recreational intimacy. Mm-hmm. How are you spending time together? Because let's face it, you know, you do all this great stuff when you're dating and then you get married and it's like, we're sitting on the couch watching Netflix. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Which, nothing wrong with that. We do it too, but not as the only thing. Right. And then the final pillar is your sexual intimacy. And so yeah. we wanted to, we, we've been studying these pillars for the last probably about 12 years now, yeah. I mean, because that predates the book. And we wanted, we've seen them transform so many couples' lives that we said, we need to put this into a book so that people can get resource. They can look yeah. at this. They can get on the same team. This isn't a tug of war. Like you need right. to strengthen this pillar and say, no, we actually come side by side. We join arms as a couple and we literally lift the roof on our marriage. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Let's talk about this a little bit. With the six pillars of intimacy, the seven days of sex challenge, what have you guys seen? You, I'm sure you guys have gotten some success stories talking about, you know, how the pillars changed their lives. And a lot of us may not, just like when I was uh, reading the intro and thinking about the book and the different levels of intimacy, it's like, whoa, financial intimacy, recreational <laughs> intimacy. There's, you're talking about pillars of intimacy that many of us may not even think is an intimate part of our relationship. Absolutely. So let's dive a little deeper into those six pillars and tell us a little bit about how they help couple and how sure. they helped you all. Yeah. You know, when we only equate sex as intimate or intimacy and sex as mm-hmm. the two, 
it's really hard for anyone to have sex 24 hours a day, mm -hmm. like straight up, just yeah. gonna be honest with everybody. And so we have to look at the fact that there are these different facets of our marriage and different ways that we can be close and connected. And so these pillars, when you look at them, I mean, we've got so many testimonials from people who are like, you know what, when I understood this concept, all of a sudden we stopped fighting against one another and said, hey, how do we sit down? And like, how do I learn how to touch you? Mm -hmm. Right? What does that look like? How do we have the conversations around finances? Yeah. And one of the big things around the six pillars of intimacy that I've seen with those in the one family is that we're not grasping for something mm -hmm. anymore. It's not like, so what's going on in your marriage? Like I can talk to guys and, and couples and who are in the one family and we can start talking. I'm like, okay, well, which pillar has a crack? Mm -hmm. And quickly they can go emotional intimacy. So no longer are we having this conversation of like, oh, well, this is going on and that's going on. And there, there, there just seems to be sort of this, like, I don't know what's going on. And it just helps couples to go, okay, here are six pillars. I understand emotional intimacy. You know, that's our connection, verbal, nonverbal, finances. I got it. Sexual. I understand it. Recreational. You know, when we explain it, like those are your dates. Those are the activities you do Time. together. The time you spend together. People understand that. But now it helps couples to go, wow, we're actually really strong in our sexual intimacy. Mm -hmm. and this is really working. And yet our financial intimacy, there's some cracks in that pillar. Right. Like we need to address this pillar because we thought we were going to have our will together or our trust together. We thought we were going to set up that insurance, that life insurance policy a year ago and we haven't, we've been mm -hmm. him and on. That's a crack in our pillar. And we need to come together as a team and figure out who's taking what, who, what are we doing? Because we need to strengthen this pillar. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow. I like that. that. That's awesome. That's an awesome viewpoint to put everything in pillars first and think of them that way. And then which pillars have cracks? In it. which pillar do we need to focus on you know why haven't we accomplished this or that or what are we doing in these areas I've, I've never thought of it that way so to hear you say it like that it's like okay wow that's awesome because now and what you're talking about the couples that you work with they now clearly define every basically it's every section of your relationship right. and it's it's a pillar because it's holding the relationship up right it's the thing right. that keeps the foundation mm -hmm. keeps everything together so the one you you're doing great with sex are you doing great with um recreation whatever it is but your finance you know whatever it is has a little crack in it so it's easier to pinpoint those things and it's also easier to put every part of our lives into a facet to call it something, to give it a name and be able to recognize when we need to deal with it or make some changes there. Absolutely. Because when you're able to name something, it's actually empowering to you, mm -hmm. right? When you're like, oh, well, this would fall under record. Like, we haven't been on a date in a while. That's recreational intimacy, right? Well, what can I do about that? It, it, we've now given couples a tool to say, we're empowered to take action, to create a shift in our marriage. Instead of, instead of pointing fingers, instead of blaming, instead of saying, oh, well, you're not doing enough for me or you're not meeting my need. What, now we're saying, wait a minute, yeah. right? And you described it beautifully, Shonda. I mean, the reason we refer to them as pillars is because pillars do some key things in architecture, right? They, they add beauty. Mm -hmm. Think of, you know, like all of the, the great Greek and Roman architecture, and they, those pillars, they just, they add beauty, but they also provide strength. Mm -hmm. yeah right? They, they hold it all together and they can carry weight. Mm. And so when the pillars in your marriage are strong, yeah. your marriage is beautiful, Love right? It. It, it is stronger for the, the investment that you have put into it. And it can carry the weight of the storms that are going to hit your life. Mm -hmm. So it was very intentional that we referred to them as pillars because that, I mean, and it actually makes me emotional even just talking about it. We've seen so many couples who, when they start to strengthen their pillars and they start working on it and they can identify it because they've got the language now, the transformation that happens when they get on the same team to make that happen is incredible. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I definitely, I definitely can see that. And that's, that was the basis of the question. Like, what has it done for you all? And what does it do for other couples? Because it is something that, that can turn what could be something that can lead to something so messy. It leads to a beauty. It leads to a strength yes. that you didn't even realize that you had because mm -hmm. now it's like we have, we have a target. And then it's, it's, it's almost like a team thing because now as a team, as a couple, you're 
we're working on the pillar together. It's yeah. not me. It's not you. It's the pillar. This is the right. issue. The pillar is the issue. And let's let's strengthen that. Let's patch that up. It has nothing to do with you, nothing to do with me. Let's focus on that pillar. I love that. I yeah. do. Yeah. And that's one thing that we really have seen over the years that there's a big tug of war around for a lot of husband and wives. Mm -hmm. One's on the other, one's on one side, the other one's on the other side. And they're just it's this tug of war. Like you need to do what I, I need you to do, or you need to do what I need you to do. And Tension is great. Like we need tension in our lives. Tension holds up bridges. I mean, mm -hmm. that's what allows, but that tension in marriage isn't helpful. I think we've all experienced that tension and it really can wear us down. The anxiety can increase, the stress can increase. Mm -hmm. And so we really wanted to flip that around and just take that tug of war and just go, you know what? You're on the same side. Mm -hmm. You're holding the same rope. Let's hold it a little differently. So that way the two of you can look at your marriage and go, let's strengthen it. Let's make it extraordinary. What are we going to do? What's the one step we're going to take maybe in one pillar today? Go for it. What I, what I love so much about it, so amazing because now instead of us working against each other, mm -hmm. now we can work together mm -hmm. to That's make true. our marriage better. I love, I, I love the analogy. I love the visual. I love the concept because I'm even thinking like, man, after strengthening the pillow, I, I mean, it's, it's, so, it's mm -hmm. so much you can do to it. I mean, mm -hmm. now, now you strengthen the pillow. Now the pillar is where you should have. Now you can, we can put a little color on it or you can yeah. paint it up a little bit, make it more beautiful. Mm -hmm. You can, now you can stick the that because you can stick the diamonds in it. You can stick the jewels yeah. in it now because I mean, this pillow is, this pillow is together. It's I mean, this, uh -huh. this pillow is, uh, yeah. this pillow is on point, you know? So it's like, you can do that then. So it's like, it's always to the point where you feel it should be, it's like it's, I can always improve, improve it. it yeah. I can always make it better. I can, I can, I can strengthen it, and then I can buy it, or I can right. do it both at the same time. I really love, I really love this because nobody see the strength, mm -hmm. but everybody see the beauty. Mm -hmm. The right. beauty is what's attractive, and then that's when they start attracting everybody else, and now they're looking at your beautiful pillar, mm -hmm. and they're like, "Wow, how did you? How you do that? How did you do that?" <laughs> right. And now I just attracted them with the jewels and everything but here we are now let, let's talk about the screen okay yeah yeah well, oh is, i love that, that i know that was I'm like, that, in all honesty man cedric that was that was absolutely beautiful man i was uh i was getting chills as you were saying that so thank you and you know this is the two of you describing the strength and the beauty and, and doing that so beautifully um what really is important for a couple to know too is that as you develop the skills and the ability to strengthen one pillar mm -hmm the pillars don't operate in isolation, right? right? They're all, they, you need Together. all of them. Mm -hmm. they're, they're intertwined. And yes. what couples need to know is that as you develop the skills in one pillar, you can actually rotate those 60 degrees, right? Transfer mm -hmm. to the next pillar. Like if you learn how to talk, this happened with a couple that I was coaching, their financial intimacy pillar was like crazy off the roof. I mean, these two could talk about budgets and they could talk about, you know, wills and like all of the things that most people choke on and don't want to ever talk about. But when it came time to talk about their sexual intimacy, it was literally, it was like, I, it was crickets. Like they couldn't, mm -hmm. I'm like, guys, you can talk about money. Uh, like mm -hmm. most people. And, and so we just started figuring out what the, what the correlation was for them. And so the strength that they had in financial intimacy, all of a sudden they realized, wait a minute, if we could talk about something that nobody can talk about mm -hmm. money, what's our hang up with sex? And they were able to transfer those skills. And it, we see it happen all the time where couples are yeah. really strong in one intimacy and they just need to be unlocked to the possibility that those skills transfer. Yeah, yeah. Right? You don't yeah. have to have special money skills or special okay. sex skills. You know? <laughs> I um, love that. Yes, yes, yes. You don't have to have this special sauce. Yeah, no special sauce. Just, <laughs> just keep working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the indicator. I love the indicator too. It's like, I mean, because the way you brought that out, I mean, just so they looking at the pillars, like you just said, the finance. So like, oh, we can talk this, 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 but when that was talking about this pillar, like you say, it's no crooked. So it's like a, it's it's a target. It's identification. Mm -hmm. It's like, man, I, we can identify this. Okay, this pillar looks nice, but this one is weak. Right. Yeah. And then the couple. Mm -hmm. That's true. Mm -hmm. I need to work on this. So it, they, they already know right away. It's like the answer is already, nobody have to tell you, you need to work on it. You tell yourself because the indicators are there. Yes. I, I love it. And then the strengthening of the couple to understand and know the same way we're able to add this beauty and this strength to this financial 
uh, intimacy period. Yes. We can do the same thing to sex. Absolutely. We can do the same thing in recreation. Mm-hmm. That, that, that shifting of the mind that is not just one thing. We may be good at this thing now and that strength in there, but we're going to add some of that same strength to these other pillars. A lot of time, marriage is so difficult. And the reason why it's so difficult because we have, there's no structure. There's, mm-hmm. there's nothing. And it's like, you're trying to build the marriage out of thin air. And this book is, I mean, it, it has the, okay, if you want to build a house, you know, you're going to need wood, you know, uh, do I want a no. brick house? Mm-hmm. Do I want a stucco house? And it's like, you have everything you need for the blueprint to make it as strong as you want it to be. And I love it. And I just want to share one thing though, too, that Cedric, that you said, you know, you guys come together mm-hmm. and you're strengthening your pillar. Well, within each pillar, there are going to be different components to it. So just for, for instance, the sexual intimacy, yeah. um, we have initiating. Mm-hmm. How are we initiating? Mm-hmm. And that that's a discussion we, we both mm-hmm. need to have, but we also need to get real with ourselves and go, how am I initiating? So there is this individual component where you got to take some responsibility oh, and yeah. accountability for yourself. Mm-hmm. You can't just be like, well, we, we're going to have better sex. So you need to, do, but initiating or foreplay, how do we, how do we want to do mm-hmm. that? And yeah. then when we get into intercourse or in those sort of things, again, positions, different places. So there's within that pillar, we have so many different areas that we can just start talking about and we can just, we don't have to get them all at one time. But we can start with one and go from there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Oh man, this is amazing. That's awesome. Tony, you just talked about the different levels and faucets within each pillar as well, but let's talk about a way that, or some, maybe some symptoms some, that a couple can look at when they see or to be able to identify these low levels of intimacy. Mm-hmm. What is what is some of that? What are some ideas you can give us to identify? Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of it'll come out in your language, right? You know, couples will say something like, you know, if we're talking about low levels of emotional intimacy, you know, you'll hear phrases like, well, we just can't seem to have a conversation, or I don't know how to talk to you, or I can't share my feelings with you. And, and that type of language indicates low levels there. Um, you know, when it comes to the physical intimacy, and again, that's, that's all of the, really the non-sexual touch, right? Well, you don't touch me. You don't kiss me. You, you know, I, all we get is a quick peck though. You start to hear a lot of times when there's disconnect, right? When there's that lack of because we always refer to the intimacies as connection and closeness, and then expand it to, you know, with a particular intimacy, you'll hear the confession of your mouth will indicate if there are low levels, you'll start complaining. Mm. about what's going on right you know if it's uh, low levels of financial intimacy well you know you're you're always spending money or we never we never talk about the budget we never talk about finances you uh, know we, we've never put together a will you know it's the always never type statements yeah. that really start to indicate you know those were just the first three um that i gave you but you know when it comes to spiritual intimacy you know we don't go to church together we don't pray together we we never do a devotional um i can't share my faith with you these are the indicators Mm. with recreational intimacy it can be i can't remember the last time we went on a date we don't i what i hear in coaching a lot is we don't have fun anymore Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there are a lot of couples that by the time they come to coaching that is we we we've stopped having fun. We're not friends. Yeah. Mm. Those are usually indicators that there's low levels of recreational intimacy. And then when it comes to sexual intimacy, it could be, uh, we're always in the same position. Mm. We never have sex. Yeah. There's no foreplay. Yeah. You know, th- those are just some of the kind of the key phrases that when we hear them, we're like, oh, okay. You know, yeah. in each one of the intimacies, those can be the indicators of low levels. And you can self-assess yourself as mm-hmm. well. Like you don't need to be saying that. And it, it may just be going on in your mind. You may be sitting there and right now you may just want to just sit down and look at all six of them and just go from zero to 10, zero being the lowest, 10 being the highest, just self evaluate where you're at, where you feel you and your marriage are at. Cause some of them, you may just be like, no, we're, we're good. We're at seven, you know, we're at an eight and others, you may start going across and going, man, we're at a one, we're at a two. And sometimes it's not just the words we're speaking, but just the environment we're in, how we're acting towards one one another, how we're not, mm-hmm. you know, how we're not engaging one another, the things that have been said or haven't been said, um, and as well as what's just happening up here in our in our own minds. And one of the best questions that you can ask, because it's entirely possible you're going to have different scores. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You are different people. Yeah. We're different people. We score differently. But 
you know, just say, hey, tell me more about your score. Because yeah. then it doesn't really come out like, why'd you score it like that? Because even if it was said in the sweetest possible way, we hear, why'd you, why'd you, why'd you give me a four? Right? Because right? we take it personally. We're like, why'd you give me a four? But if we, <laughs> if we invite our spouse to say, hey, tell me more about why you scored, as a, you scored this as a four. Mm. Now we're inviting our spouse into this place of vulnerability and connection. And it really, it starts to build the emotional intimacy, which is the workhorse, because mm. um, it undermines all of the other, the other five. But, but you get to this place where you're like, how do we do this together? Because mm-hmm. you two are on the same team. I love it. Awesome. I love it. You just said something, Elisa. Let's talk about that. You just talked about one pillar in particular Mm -hmm. that can undermine all the rest of them. Explain that to us. So if you think about it, and and we always talk about emotional intimacy first, right? Because the words that we speak in our body language directly influence the other five. Yeah. Right? So we we put a lot of weight on the emotional intimacy because if you're going to be able to, talk about finances, if you're going to talk about faith, if you're going to go out on a date, if you're going to talk about sex, if you're going to express how, you know, the touches that you like, it all comes out of the words that we speak in our body language. And there's something that we believe here is that communication and strengthening your emotional intimacy is a skill that can be learned. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely something that couples can learn to do. Elisa and I did not know how to do this the first 11 plus years of our marriage. It's probably like 11, 12 years. Even after the 60 day sex Mm -hmm. challenge, we still had issues. And yet we were committed to strengthening our emotional intimacy. And it's been a journey that we've been on to to get there, to to strengthen that because by doing that, and we didn't have the skills. Nobody came around us and were like, hey, this is what you're going to do. But this is what we love doing for the one family is just teaching and sharing. Like mm-hmm. if you're able to start talking about these things, you're able to open up about these pillars. What could shift? What could mm-hmm. happen? Yeah. Yeah. Oftentimes we don't necessarily know what is affecting things. You know, like we don't think about the emotional part. If this, if the emotional intimacy is not together, because when you said that, I was like, ding, 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 ding. If the emotional intimacy is not together, then it is going to affect the rest of them. But just like you said, Tony, we do know that the conversation that we're having here today makes it so plain. It makes it so plain. It's not complicated. It's not polluted. It's simple for you to understand. And the idea of the pillars definitely were clear to me is what holds everything together the strength the togetherness and then you said the beauty at least so I'm like okay that's something else to add to it so I think this is great and this book will be life-changing to every couple who gets it in their hand to be able to get that um, blueprint we talked about that even with the seven days of sex challenge that blueprint to give you some ideas some foundation to start with is amazing yeah yeah thank you But inside the book, we actually have the six pillars of intimacy quiz. So instead of having to self-assess yourself, we have 30 questions that you can answer and that it will come up and it will tell you, hey, your emotional intimacy is 80%, but your financial intimacy is 20%. So so hear this. I mean, so uh, this is amazing day. So you, your all book just released on today, November 9th. So let's talk about that. Well, it's, it's been a journey right? Because we've been studying these intimacies and, we, and we've wanted a way to not just, you know, talk about it on a podcast, right? right. But to actually equip couples. And so, yeah, today is, today is like a birthday, right? It's like having a baby yeah. because this book is now live. Yeah. And, you know, as we've been talking, and I know, Tony, you kind of talked about the self-assessment and, and doing that kind of thing. But, you know, the beauty of the book is that it, right inside, I don't know, it's like page five, um, we have a link to a quiz. Where you don't have to self-assess, click through the 30 questions and actually get an understanding of what your strongest pillars are, mm-hmm. right? Because doing that in conjunction with reading this book, guys, you're going to skyrocket your marriage. It, it, this isn't just, uh, we've seen the transformation time after time, after time, after time. And all we want, like literally, you know, the reason our business is called One Extraordinary Marriage is because it has always been our mission to impact one marriage. Yep. (laughs) Those of you listening today, today is your day. Mm -hmm. Wow. Right? Get equipped, start strengthening your pillars and make this be, make the end of this year and the beginning of next year just be your best ever. Yeah. And if you want to get it, you can go to sixpillarsofintimacy.com. That's where you can go to 
to grab it and you know just just grab it we have it in kindle we have the, the paperback whichever you mm -hmm. whichever you choose grab it start the, the, the biggest thing that elisa and i have learned and, and and elisa said that when we started the one extraordinary marriage show it was to impact one couple one extraordinary marriage is to impact one mm -hmm. couple and we're believing in all honesty as we as we get this book out there into your hands it's to impact one couple yeah because we it's care about you enough that you know what if it shifts where you're at then the community changes the legacy you leave changes your kids are changed the, the the marriages around you change and that's what it's about definitely i definitely believe in what you all are doing mm -hmm. i see i see the hand of god in this because yes, absolutely where you were even though at that moment you couldn't see it look what he's used it to do today and how it's going to change the trajectory of so many couples and so many families so we, we, we know as believers that we know that he works out everything for good. And yeah. that's what he is doing through you guys and the six pillars of intimacy, changing marriages, strengthening marriages around the world. And I'm excited. Yeah. I am definitely excited. Cedric and I have just yes. talked about it and we would. And I just want to thank you guys because yeah. it makes me emotional. Um, even just in this conversation, yeah. all we've ever wanted to do was to make something that people think is so complicated, right? We hear, and marriages work. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, you have to put anything that's worthwhile, you will put effort into. Yeah. But I think for so many years, people have thought that marriage is complicated. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be. Like, it, we just, we're just never taught how to do marriage well. Right. And all we want to do is equip those around the world who are saying, you know what, I want to be married and I want to have an extraordinary marriage. We just want to equip you. Mm -hmm. We, we want to help you have the tools so that you don't feel like you're grasping for straws so that you don't feel like you're all by yourself when life throws you curveballs and it will we've had curveballs ourselves i'm sure you guys have had curveballs too where you're like wow didn't see that coming Absolutely. Mm -hmm. but these pillars will give you the strength and, and all we want to do and again it comes back to it, all we want to do is just impact one mm -hmm. God, God takes care of all, God takes care of bringing us the one every day. And we wake yeah. up every day going, we don't know. That's why we haven't stopped because we don't know whose marriage we're still supposed to impact. Right. So we just keep going. Yeah. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. And I definitely, definitely will be praying God's choices, blessings over you all and what you are doing. Absolutely. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. This is so awesome. I, I, I truly, um, am thankful. Um, a lot of work has gone in behind the scenes and, and, and a lot of people don't see that, you know what I mean? And we're going to keep pressing and we tell them, we're like, we're here on a mission and, and we know with the six pillars of intimacy that God is going to reveal stuff to every couple. Mm -hmm. He, he, he will, he, he will show you where you need to be. Mm -hmm. um, it's just like the Israelites in the desert, you know, yeah. <laughs> flame by night, just keep following that flame. Like, yes. he'll, show you which one, he'll show you which one and it's, it's our desire that the two of you will come together and realize mm -hmm. that you guys are on that on the same team. The, the same way that you said I do on your wedding day, you were so googly eyed for each <laughs> other. You were like, oh my gosh, I'm going to kiss her. I'm going to kiss him. I do. We want you to be right there today going, we're, we're doing our I do's again, and we're going to go after this marriage together. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, this has been um, amazing, impactful emotional, exciting podcast for, for Shante and I. Mm -hmm. and we're, I'm telling you, we're so excited about this, about this day, about this day, this release of this book. And I'm going to tell you, we're just excited to be a part of it. So what I want you guys to do right now, I want you to everywhere the book is sold. And then if someone wants to reach out to you, connect with you and what you're doing, where should we go? Yeah. So to get the book, six pillars of intimacy.com. And then on other, on everything else, go to one extraordinary marriage.com. So I would say go those two places. If you want to hear the one extraordinary marriage show, you open up your favorite podcast app, whatever it may be, just do, just search one extraordinary marriage show. It should be the first one, click it, follow, like it, whatever your app does. And, uh, you'll get, you know, episodes since we started in January, 2010, who knows how many it is wow. as of this recording, we're into 673. Yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot. <laughs> it's been a while. That's awesome. That's awesome. 
On behalf of the TMC community, we want to thank you all so very much for taking time out of your busy schedule and adding value to us all. Thank you. Thank you both. It's been an honor and a privilege. Absolutely. Absolutely. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you did, go ahead and subscribe. Click the like button and turn on your notifications so you'll be notified when we upload a video every week. If you're listening on iTunes, rate the podcast and leave a review. Head on over to our leadership podcast, Lead to Greatness, where my husband is interviewing entrepreneurs and great leaders every week. So we want to thank you for joining us today on TMC. Looking forward to hanging out with you again on next week as we continue to help you take your relationship from from surviving surviving to thriving. thriving. Bye. Bye. See you next week. week.